Hello viewers, you're welcome to Wilson Global Learning and Training Academy. In our today's video, we'll be focusing, we'll be looking at biology and we'll be focusing on cells. Now, in, in this topic, cells, we're first of all going to look at what cells are and uh, the different types of cells in the body and the, the categories, the animal cells and the plant cells. Now, what are living things made of? First, of virtually every living thing is made up of uh, cells and therefore we say cells are the building blocks of uh, all living organisms and the cells they come in different shapes and in different sizes now there are different categories of these cells we have uh, unicellular organisms in terms of organisms and we have multicellular organisms for unicellular organisms we say they are made up of uh, only one type of uh, cells so when you say unicellular organisms, you, 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 you're talking about organisms that are made up of only one type of uh, cells. Example like bacteria, as we're going to take a look at thereafter. Now, what are, in the other case, or the other hand, we talk about the multicellular organisms. The multicellular organisms are those organisms that are made up of uh, many different types of uh, cells. Like we human beings, we're made up of different specialized uh, cells in our body, performing some specific tasks and they're in our body and they have different structures and functions in the body as they are. Now, cells work together to carry out uh, the basic several life processes. Although in my case, I said eight life processes. I've added one to the several basic life processes as it were. And I said my eight life process is death because I found out from my research that all living things uh, eventually will die. And therefore, I have added this as one of the characteristics of uh, all living things. Now, what are the several basic life processes? First of all, we look, we take a look at the uh, movement. We say all living things uh, move from one place to another or show some growth movement. In in any case, all living things uh, move either in search of food, in search of uh, uh, anything, water, food, and to survive for survival. Even plants that you don't see moving from place to place, they show some growth movement. So all living things do show movement. Then another uh, life process that all living things have to undergo, it's uh, respiration. All living things, plants, animals do respire in order to release energy for the, their life uh, processes and for metabolic uh, re reactions. Then sensitivity. All living things uh, respond to external stimuli. For example, you can see this species being responded to the direct heat from the sun. So all living things respond to external stimuli. If you take, if you pinch, take a nail or a needle to hit your skin, to touch your skin, you go to like react to it immediately because you're very sensitive to it. If light comes to your eyes, you go to react. Your eyes will go to react because says nerve says it's going to message going to be sent to the brain and it's going to be interpreted and it's, it's as it were. Now growth, all of the things do show growth, growth do grow from uh, either by uh, growing up or by getting increasing in size and weight or by like getting taller, bigger, and so on and so forth. So uh, all of the things, either plants or animals, do show growth in, 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 in their case. Now, reproduction. Reproduction is also a characteristic of all living things. All living things do produce their young ones alive, either sexually or asexually. So all living things do undergo this uh, life process. Then uh, the, seven, the sixth one is uh, excretion. All living things do get rid of their waste product from the body, either in form of sweat, uh, from the skin, uh, urine from the kidney, and so on and so forth. All living things, plants or animals, do get rid of the waste product from the body. Then nutrition. All living things require nutrients so as they can, uh, uh, that should be absorbed to be used in the body in form of energy. Okay, so in summary, these are all the, what it means. In the, we, 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 we represent these uh, several life processes as Mrs. Grain. Mrs. Grain, it's uh, just a uh, a short notation showing uh, the several life processes. In my case, I am adding one now because of my new research, death. Death. I said death is a characteristic of all living things because eventually I found out that all living things, plus animals, they eventually die at the end of their process. So it's, it's part of our characteristics of uh, living things. Okay.
how big is a cell now let's take a look at cells structure how big is a cell we say normally the cell of uh, in the body or in the plants or in any organisms spans from the range of 10 micrometer to 100 micrometer and uh, they usually like just like the diameter of uh, our hair the hair the little hair from your head uh, the diameter of the hair a, a, a small piece of hair it's just uh, how uh, how the size of uh, a cell looks like so usually you can see it viscously you use a microscope to look at uh, a cell so it's in in the body we say the biggest cell in the body is the uh, female egg cells and the smallest cell in the human body it's uh, the sperm cells the female egg cells is around 100 micrometer in diameter and the sperm cell is around 5 micrometer in diameter. Now, what if we say that the cells are so small that they cannot be seen by uh, our naked eyes in some cases, well, how then do we see the cell? Usually we use uh, tools such as microscope and which we go to study in physics, microscope uh, to look at uh, the cells I'm gonna, uh, and see how it looks like how it, the internal structure and composition of a cell. So we use a microscope to look at it vividly. And therefore, when we talk about microscope, we're going to talk about the the image compared to the object, how it was originally, and how it has uh, been magnified. To what extent has it been magnified? So therefore, magnification we define as the size of the image over the actual size of the object. So. If you want to see how an object has been magnified, you go to like look at the ratio of the image to the actual size of the object. Now, specialized cells we're looking at right now. Specialized cells are those cells that perform specific functions in the body. So, diff because there are different kinds of cells in the body, all performing different specific uh, function in the human body, or in animals, or in plants. In human being, we have about 200 different types of cells working together to achieve the objective of, of uh, 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 human, human existence. Now, most cells are specialized. That means they perform specific functions and structure in the human body. All cells with a nucleus contain the same genes, but different cells activate different genes so they only produce the, the protein that they need for at, or at that particular point in time. Now let's take a look at uh, the different kinds of cells, specifically the major cells that we have. In this case, we're categorizing them into plants and animal cells. For plants, what do they contain? Plant cells, what do they contain? And the animal cells, what do they contain? Now, if for example, if we assume this this shape as a as an animal cell, and we assume this as a plant cell, just for example, and if you take a look at this uh, animal cell you discover or you see that here we have the mitochondrion, we have the nucleus, we have the ribosome, we have the cytoplasm, we have the cell membrane. Now, what do the mitochondrion do? It's the site for uh, energy synthesis in the body or the release of energy in the body. Then the nucleus, the nucleus contains the DNA. The ribosome is the site for photosynthesis in the body. Cytoplasm, this is where the metabolic uh, reaction takes place in the human body and then what of the cell membrane the cell membrane it controls the uh, uh, what goes in and out of uh, a cell it's a semi-permeable uh, aspect partially permeable membrane that allows uh, or controls what goes in and out of the cell now let's take a look at the plant cells what they have in common with the animal cells and what they have that the animal cells don't have now, if you take a look at the plant cells, for example, you discover that they have both also have mitochondrion, they have nucleus, they have ribosome, they have uh, cytoplasm, and they have the cell membrane. But they have all the things that the animal cells, cells don't have. What are those things? They have the vacuum, they have the cytopla uh, uh, chloroplast, and they have the cell wall. Now, what do all of these do? The chloroplast, uh, we say, is the it contains a green pigment which uh, helps to trap the sunlight energy for photosynthesis to take place. It's the powerhouse for, is the site for photosynthesis in plant cells. 
and then the cell wall it gives this rigidity and the structure of the cell and protection to the cell then the vacuum uh, contains uh, water and nutrients for the plant cells to carry out its metabolic activity okay so now we want to do take a look at uh, some uh, characteristics of the plants and animal cells what they have in common both of them and what the plant cells have only and let's see if you understand or you uh, can categorize the characteristics of both of them and uh, what the plant cells have than the animal cells don't have now let's take a look at the first one the nucleus the nucleus both plants and animal cells they do have it let's check okay good now let, we're going to verify that if we're right or wrong if we're wrong we see if we're right we see the cytoplasm both the plant cells and the animal cells they both have cytoplasm so we put the cytoplasm in this uh, place now what are the chloroplasts the chloroplast we said is the site for the uh, photosynthesis it contains the degree pig, pig, pigment which helps to trap the sunlight energy for photosynthesis to take place therefore it's only found in plant cells now what of the vacuum vacuum contains uh, the water it's a fluid like uh, substance that contains water and nutrient nutrient for the plants to carry out its own or, uh, or, uh, uh, function so uh, it's it's found in plant cells now what of the cell membrane the cell membrane we say it's a partially permeable membrane that controls what goes in and out of the cell so it's both is found in both plants and animal cells what of the cell wall the cell wall uh, it gives the rigid shape of the cell and gives protection to the cell so it's found in the uh, plant cell only what of the ribosome the ribosome is the site for proteosynthesis and is found in both plants and animal cells. What of the mitochondria? The mitochondria is the site for energy released by respiration, so it's found in both plants and animal cells. Now let's check what we've done if it's uh, worth it. Yeah, that's great. That's that, that's it. So we move on to our next uh, aspect of plant cell. We we'll, now we go. We take a look at the uh, microbial cells, like cells from the microbe. What are microbes? Before we talk about microbial cells, what are microbes? Microbes, uh, we generally they have two categories: the the harmful ones and the and the useful ones. Uh, the harmful is like the bacteria. We say the disease causing organisms, uh, like the bacteria. But the useful ones, like the yeast cells, they are used for making yogurt and all the bread and uh, uh, alcohol and other things that we consume. Uh, in our daily lives so the the microbes we're looking at them now in two just two uh, categories the harmful and the useful ones other than the harmful one we'll take a look at the bacteria cell the bacteria cells what does what do they contain the bacteria cells they contain the dna molecules they contain the fly flagella and they contain the cell wall they contain contain uh, the cell membrane they contain the cytoplasm the DNA molecules contain the gene and everything that the, uh, uh, body, uh, the, 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 the cell is made of. The flagella enables the movement of the, the cell or the organism. The movement is used for locomotion uh, by the organism. Then the cytoplasm, this is where the metabolic reaction takes place. And the cell membrane it controls what goes in and out. It's a partially permeable membrane that controls what goes in and out of the cell. What of the cell wall? The cell wall gives rigidity protection to the cell. So the bacterial cell contains all of this. And but let's take a look at the yeast cell and see what they have in common with the bacteria cell and what they have that the bacteria cell do, do not have. Now, if you take a look at the yeast cell or the microbial cell, they they, they 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 have the cell wall, which means it, they 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 protected. They have rigid. They be rigid and they have the cell membrane which controls what goes in and out they have the cytoplasm and the metabolic reaction do take place and they have the vacuum which contains the water and nutrient for the plant or for the cell to carry out its activity or for growth and other things and then they have the mitochondria which is the site for energy released in the cell now okay so these are the things they have then the bacteria cell do not have so this is the difference between both the useful microbes and the harmful microbes other than the ha harmful microbes we talk about the bacteria cells and we've talked about what they contain and the functions of each of what they contain and other the the the, the, 
the useful uh, microbes. We're talking about the yeast cells that it be used for alcohol productions, used for uh, used for wine, making wine, in use for making bread, yogurt, ice cream, and all lot of this. And we've looked at the cell, what they contain, and what they have. Then the microbe, the the bacteria cells do not have. Now let's move ahead. And let's look at bacteria in general. We said the bacteria DNA is made up of a cluster of chromos chromosomal DNA, the, the DNA, and it has a single strand of, which is called the pl pl plasmid the DNA. Now, the plasmid DNA can reproduce independently of the chromosomal DNA. They can do, they can, they can reproduce independently apart from uh, uh, the chromosomal DNA. They, they can do their work independently and they can transfer they can be transferred to other cells also. So the plasmin the DNA can be transferred to other cells and they can do the function independently irrespective of uh, the main parent uh, DNA, which is the chromosomal DNA. And the bacteria, also, they lack uh, mitochondria and the chloroplast like we saw just now. And uh, so we also said that, that some bacteria, they have one or more flagella and which they use for locomotion, movement. Look, by locomotion, I mean the movement. They use the flagella. They have one or more, depending on the size or types. They, they, they use the, this uh, flagella for movement. 